Welcome to It's Your Ego, Stupid, a show lovingly intended for millions of spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people like you who may at times be led into ego stupidity, a lesser version of yourself and a lesser version of life. This show will give you a much deeper understanding of what ego is, what it's doing to your life, how it can weaken your human and spiritual wellness, and how you can heal in each of these areas if needed. It's Your Ego, Stupid will heighten your awareness of the intense link between your ego and spirit, your humanity and divinity, and the synergy that can lead to the best version of you and your life. Your host is Dr. Nick Martin, a licensed psychologist who has worked in the clinical, university, school, and private practice settings over the past 40 years, while serving as a therapist, diagnostician, educator, and consultant. Welcome again to It's Your Ego, Stupid, and now your host, Dr. Nick Martin. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nick Martin, also known by some as Ego Man. Due to my intense focus on ego and how it's impacting our lives, both humanly and spiritually, I want to thank you for listening to It's Your Ego, Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, And I hope you've had a great week as you go about meeting the many important challenges that we all face, which during our program today will have us looking at how lower ego vulnerability contributes to difficulty interacting with people and getting along with them, how their difficulties in recognizing the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity affects the ways they interact and meet with people in general, not just family and friends. These are the kinds of interactions that can take place in school or work settings, perhaps play and recreational, social gatherings or parties, as well as general public settings like stores and sporting events. These are the places that often involve dealing with acquaintances and strangers, or those that we may loosely think of as being friends. Our success in connecting with people in these broader social contexts has important implications for our social, emotional, and spiritual growth. Because it's this growth that allows us to experience a sense of peace and love for all people, regardless of their background, and whether we know them or not. Instead of living in a social bubble, or being caught up in tribalism, which is something that seems to be happening for many people, Nowadays, when you look at the lack of civility you often see playing out in society, these are indications of people having difficulty interacting with people in healthy ways and being able to get along with them. If they were able to do so, this wouldn't be happening. This is something that many people are having trouble doing that is having a harmful effect on the quality of their lives and often the lives of the people they live with. Because they often bring their getting along with people difficulties home with them. Failure to cultivate their social growth and their ability to get along with people often sets the stage for mental health, marital, sexual, drug and alcohol, legal, and work adjustment difficulties involving people. Their social maturation and our social maturation has an important impact on our emotional and spiritual development. And that's why the first society that we live in, our family, has a profound effect on our emotional and spiritual development, for better or worse, depending on whether it's healthy, mildly dysfunctional, or significantly dysfunctional with the latter involving lots of abuse or neglect, be it physical, emotional, mental, or sexual. It's this that affects our ego energy and what we are bringing into the outside world and whether we can continue to grow socially, emotionally, and spiritually. And that's why I consider it to be one of the important life areas, our ability to interact, and get along with people in healthy ways. Failing to do that will stop you from having a great life 
or even a good life. Because the quality of your life is going to be poor or fair at best if you don't get along well with people. I'm going to be looking at this difficulty in getting along with people in healthy ways in this and my other programs that are focused specifically on a particular imbalanced ego energy and its impact on getting along with people, which again during our program today will involve looking at lower ego vulnerability on one's ability to do so. But before we go more deeply into that focus, I want to mention that It's Your Ego Stupid is a program for spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people, just like you and me, who may at times be led by our ego into something I call ego stupidity, a lesser version of ourselves, and often a lesser version of life, a poor or fair one at best. Ego stupidity, rooted in ego energy, affecting relationships with our family, our friends and co-workers, even ourselves, that could stand some improvement, often a lot of improvement. Ego stupidity, rooted in ego energy, impacting our efforts to achieve, to make use of our potential, to recognize the service in what we are doing, whatever that is, and being able to experience a sense of meaning connected to our life's work. Ego stupidity, affecting our ability to do effectively with all of the changes, adversity, stressors, and conflicts taking place in our life, often leading to their managing us rather than our managing them. Ego stupidity, making it difficult to grow our mind with truth while keeping us stuck in faulty beliefs, values, attitudes and prejudices with many acquired nowadays from unfiltered social media, fake news on the internet, and opinion news on TV, masquerading as truth and often suggesting that truth doesn't matter anymore, which is leading many to avoid inconvenient truths, truths that we need to hear even though we may not want to hear them. Ego stupidity, making it difficult to feel genuine, lasting happiness, while often leading us into unnecessary anxiety, anger, guilt, sadness, or fake happiness being substituted for the real thing. And finally, ego stupidity, impacting our spiritual wellness and ability to be the love, the life, and the energy God is in our daily thoughts, words, and deeds. In short, impacting our ability to be our divinity in our daily life. As you can see, there are lots of important places that ego stupidity can make its appearance in our lives, the source of which is the nature of our ego energy. If things aren't going as well as you'd like in any of these areas, You've come to the right place because a lot of what's going wrong has nothing to do with our intelligence or the absence of spirituality or the presence of mental instability and has a lot more to do with our ego energy, which is serving as the fuel for ego stupidity. Your lives, relationships and experiences have taught me all of that over the past 40 years and what I'm sharing with you in my website, my books, and my shows about ego energy and ego stupidity, and how we can heal it with ego medicine when and where needed. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. During today's show, we're going to be looking at the impact that lower ego vulnerability has on a way a person gets along with people, particularly the people they may know less well, like acquaintances and strangers, and people that they often keep in that level of relationship. As a quick reminder, people with lower vulnerability often enter into social settings with a limited or absent awareness of their own weaknesses and imperfections. 
So they lack a healthy awareness of the kind of social boundaries they can be violating or crossing because of their overly positive impression of themselves. Some may call this high self-esteem, meaning the importance of oneself, the value of, of oneself is quite high. And often the level of social esteem for others is relatively low which is operating in the ego energy of the person with lower ego vulnerability. They also have difficulty experiencing the kinds of emotions that we all use to serve as guardrails in our interactions with people. Emotions such as love, anxiety, and guilt that can draw attention to whether our treatment of others has been appropriate or inappropriate. They also often have difficulty experiencing empathy and compassion for others that, that undermines the growth of relationships. For the most part, they keep relationships on a superficial level and relationships with people remain on an acquaintanceship or stranger status, even though they may see these people all the time. It seems like their relationships never grow. They're kind of like a plant that is the relationship that never grows. It's just stagnant. And people with lower vulnerability aren't interested in getting to know people better. For them, people are like ships passing in the night, which they can take or leave uh, regarding getting to know them better. People often may experience the lower vulnerability person as insensitive because they don't reach out to people in need or they can be too blunt in their comments and criticisms of others. The more they do this, the greater the amount of lower ego vulnerability that is flowing into their mind. We'll be mentioning more of the symptoms and the ego stupidity that often occurs for them when they are having difficulty interacting with people in healthy ways as we go further in today's show. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Well, there are millions of people who experience these difficulties because there are over 8 billion people on the planet, every one of them having an ego, just like you and me. Some of them are living in the roles of the hedonist, the logician, and the inattentive person that I talk about in my book, The Two Voices Within. I want you to take a look to see if you or a loved one is experiencing any of the symptoms, the ego stupidity, and the ego impact on spiritual wellness I'll be talking about today. I want you to diagnose you because you're the only one living you 24 seven. Now we're going to take a look at some of the symptoms that indicate if a lower ego vulnerability voice, the mixturing of your ego energy into your mind is talking to and through you in your life when interacting with people. And here's the first symptom. You form friendships on a superficial basis with little or no emotional depth. So the connecting with people is very uh, restricted to things of a more superficial nature. People with lower vulnerability don't approach meeting people with an interest in getting to know them better. They're not interested in getting to know people more in depth or more deeply. They, pretty much prefer the basic kinds of information, uh, name, place, and serial number, if you will. And here are some questions that f can help you to tune into whether you are experiencing this or not. Do you find it difficult to want to get to know people better or more personally? This need, this drive, this desire to get to know people uh, more uh, deeply, uh, to get to know them better, to have a more personal connection, is, is something that just works for you, that you have very little, if any, interest in that. Do you find it difficult to let people know more about you? The idea of allowing people or letting people get inside your life and to know more about who you are and where you come from and just not feeling any real interest, not a fear-based uh, issue that people with maybe different kinds of ego energy may have, just this idea that I'm just not that interested in people getting to know me. 
Are you the kind of person that people would say they never really knew? That they never really knew. That we worked with each other, we did things, we knew about each other, but that's about it. We never really got any closer than the real surface, superficial stuff. When you think of these kinds of questions and the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? I'm going to go on to the next symptom. You have difficulty reading the emotional reactions of others to what you have said or done. Or, if you do, you don't care. Again, difficulty reading the emotional reactions to what you have said or done on the part of others, and you don't care if you do realize it. Now, people with lower vulnerability often have a what I call a clueless quality and have trouble reading social cues. Uh, so are you having, are you weak at reading nonverbal communication, meaning what a look meant, what a gesture meant, or perhaps somebody was offering a hint, being able to pick up on this level of communication that humans often use to kind of interact with people? Or do you have difficulty recognizing sarcasm? Understanding what sarcasm is and experiencing it when it's being directed your way. Again, another form of interaction that often goes on with people that can face a deeper level of, of awareness of what's going on. Or are you surprised to hear people were more upset with you than you thought they were? Again, being surprised to hear that people were more upset with you than you thought they were. And this has to do with the issue of empathy and lack of empathy uh, for how other people are feeling, lack of compassion, lack of interest, uh, not being in touch with one's emotions, making it more difficult to be in touch with what maybe other people are feeling that's going on. When you think of these particular questions and the symptom, does, that sound, does any of it sound familiar to you? We're going to go on to one more symptom before we take our first break. You can often overestimate the impressions people have of you and may think they're more positive than they really are. Overestimating how people see you in a real positive light, uh, more positive light uh, than they really may be. People with lower vulnerability, due to being out of touch with their weaknesses and imperfections, often carry around what I would call a positive bias about themselves. And they often, meaning they see themselves in this really positive light, and they think that maybe other people do the same, that they're looking at them the same way that they're looking at themselves. Um, and as I said earlier, high self-esteem, experiencing this high level of valuing of oneself and one's capabilities, and perhaps thinking that that's where other people are looking at you like often failing to realize that there's a difference between high self-esteem and healthy self-esteem. The healthy self-esteem is our balancing between liking and loving ourselves as well as being able to like and love others, sort of on an equal level. Well, that's not the experience of the person with lower ego vulnerability. They are much more likely to be, have an inflated sense of themselves, often liking or loving themselves. So here are a few questions. Would you be surprised to find out there were some things people didn't like about you? That they didn't see you in this overly positive light that you see yourself? Would you be surprised to find out from people that there are some things you need to work on? That there are some things that you need to work on and improve upon? It often comes as a surprise for those with lower ego vulnerability. Or would you be surprised to find that, pe that people may find you to be rude, insensitive, reckless, uncaring, cold, or non-supportive? These are often the kinds of experiences people have with those with lower ego vulnerability and the way they can come across. When you think of these questions and the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? coming up on our first break when we return we'll be looking at some reflections of ego stupidity
connected to interacting with people for those with lower ego vulnerability energy. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. And I'll see you after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, Dr. Nick Martin here. I want to invite you to visit my website, egoandspirit.info, where you can find lots of information on ego and download your free ebook copy of It's Your Ego Stupid. Fix it to fix your life. Also, please visit the shop page where you can find each of my other books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, and The Two Voices Within. 19 brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at reflections of ego stupidity and when it's happening in a lower ego vulnerability person's difficulties in healthily interacting with people. Some of these may seem odd or strange or weird or inappropriate, but that's because you're not living in that energy. But for those with lower vulnerability, it's leading them to engage in ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are affecting their ability to interact with people due to their lower vulnerability energy. And it can often lead them to conclude that the abnormal things that they think, feel, or do are normal when dealing with people. That is, they are often normalizing abnormality. And there seems to be a lot of this going on today, which is reflective of ego stupidity. And like the symptoms, they can become their abnormal normal. These reflections of ego stupidity that they don't realize they're caught up in. But others often can, because they're not looking at them through the same ego energy prism or lens or filter that the lower vulnerability person is looking through to see what's really going on, what's taking place in their dealings with people. And they are intelligent, spiritual, imperfect, and mentally stable people just like you and me, but they've gotten caught up in that web of an abnormal world of their own making due to their unhealthy lower vulnerability energy. And they can stay stuck there until they heal the energy leading them to the symptoms and the ego stupidity we're talking about. They can do this with the use of ego medicine, which consists of knowing what ego is and isn't. Getting to the truth of what ego is and that it's an energy. It's our survival energy that's helping us in our lives in many of those 10 key life areas. But when it gets out of balance, it can often lead to the ego stupidity that we talk about. And also coming to understand what ego is not, Uh, two things that come to mind are the understanding that ego doesn't think, it doesn't have an intellect, 
it doesn't have an awareness of you. It doesn't have an awareness of itself, and it doesn't have an awareness of God. I mention this because often writings about ego suggest that it does, and that's just not the case because it's just an energy. Another uh, myth, as I would refer to it, is that ego has an intentional quality that is intentionally attempting to interfere in uh, operating your life, which again, it cannot do because it doesn't have an intellect with which to think, to form an awareness, and ultimately to form intentions. So that's the first uh, uh, e part of ego medicine, is just getting a fundamental, hard foundation on what ego is and is not. Our next contributor, the second, is that we can tune into our ego energy, get a handle on how much ego power, ego vulnerability, and ego flexibility are operating within our energy because this is affecting the kinds of ways we go about living and handling the 10 key life areas. And when it's out of balance, it can be creating lots of issues uh, reflective of ego stupidity. And this is something that's new territory. No one else has ever written about this, about the energy, the diversity of the energy, the breadth of the energy, the depth of the energy, like I have. And the way we come to an understanding and being able to tune into it is by using the resources that I'm trying to provide to you to do that. They can include my books, they include my uh, podcasts, and they include the website for you to get more and more information that you can have. And then one more contributor is replacing ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts and beliefs, the ones that we created involving the ego energy flowing into our mind, and we replace those with uh, thoughts that are connected to truth and reality, both human and divine. And this is uh, the third part, the contributor involves looking, uh, this involves our next part of our program today, which is looking at reflections of ego stupidity for the disconnection from reality, the kinds of inaccurate, illogical, or ir irrational thoughts that people with lower vulnerability often bring into their interactions with people. And here is the first one. I'm not hurting people's feelings with the way I treat them. People with lower vulnerability often don't think or think they're not hurting people in the way they interact with them or hurting their feelings, which is a non-reality based thought because a lot of times the lack of contact with their emotions makes it difficult for them to appreciate the feelings of other people's emotions as well as the lack of contact with their weaknesses and imperfections uh, interferes with their ability to see how they truly are being with people. So there's a lot, a lot of non-reality based thinking going on there. Um, people with lower vulnerability have difficulty connecting their actions to people's feelings. Again, because they're out of touch with their own feelings. So by not knowing much about their own feelings, it's harder for them to understand the feelings of others. And here are some uh, additional ego stupidity, relate, reflections of ego stupidity, often follow on from this thought. Uh, the thought that they're being too sensitive. So if people are upset and they can see that they're upset, they, their non-reality based thought is they're being too sensitive. Well, the reality-based thought here may be that you're being too insensitive. You're being too insensitive. And that is often the case for people with lower ego vulnerability who are out of touch with feelings, their own and those of others. Another non-reality-based thought reflective of ego stupidity, things should affect them the way they affect me. Things should affect them, the other person, the way they affect me, which maybe is not at all. That's the thought that's going on in the mind of the person with lower ego vulnerability. Uh, whereas the reality-based thought is that things, the same things can affect people differently. And that is the true case of things. We don't all feel the same way about certain things. But this is a reflection of ego stupidity when the lower vulnerability person thinks that the way things affect them should be the way that they affect others. And one more non-reality based thought, uh, they'll get over it. 
meaning that it's not a big deal, wasn't such a big deal, so they should just be able to get over and everything will be fine. And again, that's this lack of understanding and in, in contact with one's own feeling, a lack of compassion, a lack of empathy, feeling to realize that things can be much more difficult for others to handle than it may be for themselves. When your lower vulnerability is healing, you begin to realize that a person's feelings and their reactions are much more connected to who they are than who you are. But until then, when you're thinking that you're not hurting people's feelings with the way you treat them and all the rest of what I shared with you, that's your ego making you stupid. We'll go on to another reflection. People like and love me. People like and love me. People with high or with low, lower ego vulnerability often have an inflated sense of themselves partly because they're out of contact with their humanity, with their weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity. And people with lower vulnerability often think people see them the way they see themselves. Again, with lots of high self-esteem. You know, they think other people have the same level of esteem for them that they have for themselves. And that's not necessarily the case and often isn't. And some of the additional thoughts that may be going on for people with lower or lower vulnerability is that people are seeing all the good stuff, meaning that people are all noticing all my good qualities and, and, uh, and because that's the only ones I can see and that's the ones they're seeing. Real feeling to realize that no, people are often seeing the things that you don't see because they're seeing you in a more objective, rational light. And another non-reality based thought reflective of ego stupidity is that there isn't any bad stuff to be seen. Again, this real inflated sense of one's uh, being of so high self-esteem, not healthy self-esteem, but high self-esteem that inflates how they look at themselves and how they think others are looking at them, which is often non-reality based stuff. And one more thought connected to this area, if I can't see any bad, weak, or needed areas for improvement, then there aren't any. Again, this notion that if I can't see it, it's not real, it doesn't exist, failing to un understand that the energy is really playing a role in obscuring the view of who you truly are and how you're truly being. When your lower vulnerability is healing, you realize that people see through you through their lens, not yours, and that may have a more balanced view, meaning that they can see all of you, not just some of you or the part that you think that they're saying or that you're only saying. I'm going to talk about one more reflection. It's okay to upset people for my enjoyment. It's okay to upset people for my enjoyment, a non-reality based thought. People with lower vulnerability can find precipitating drama, upsetting others, or instigating conflict to be a source of emotional arousal. And that's often a compensation for their inability to f experience feelings under normal circumstances. And this is ego stupidity that feeds into additional ego stupidity often beginning to happen that it's okay to upset people for my enjoyment. It's sort of my entertainment, a non-reality based thought. Also, I'm not really hurting anyone by exploiting them or manipulating them or trying or toying with their emotions. That, that's not really having an effect on them. Again, a non-reality based thought. And also that it's okay to tease people, even if they don't like it. It's okay to tease people, even if they don't like it. That's a non-reality based thought that some people with lower ego vulnerability get caught up with. So they give themselves permission to keep teasing people when it's really inappropriate. When your lower vulnerability is healing, you begin to realize that intentionally upsetting people is emotionally destructive and are reflective of issues involving your ego energy. But until then, when you're thinking, that it's okay to upset people for your enjoyment and all of the rest, well, that's your ego making you stupid. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the ego insights connected to the symptoms and the ego stupidity I've been talking about. <clears throat> These are insights that can help you to better see what's going on behind the scenes and beneath the surface when it comes to difficulty in dealing with people. 
These are insights intended to help you see more of your ego blindness if you have lower vulnerability and what ego is actually doing when it comes to difficulties. And here's the first one. Your lower vulnerability voice, that mixture of your ego energy and mind, is distancing you from your emotions and the part they can play if informing healthy connections to other people. It's weakening your ability to feel the love. That's the emotional bonding agent between you and others. So, you know, love is so important to connecting with people. When you have lower vulnerability, you have difficulty experiencing love from within as well as for others. It's also weakening your ability to feel the anxiety that cues us to how we may be affecting people. Anxiety can be a really healthy emotion because it sets off warning signals that tell us how we're doing and whether we need to change something. Uh, <clears throat> whether we're crossing over, you know, an area that we shouldn't be doing, a boundary of some form. But the lower vulnerability energy is getting in the way of one's ability to experience that healthy anxiety. And it's also weakening your ability to feel the guilt that can allow you to own mistakes in how you've affected others. Again, like anxiety and love, guilt can be a very healthy emotion built into our humanity to allow us to take responsibility, to be accountable, to own the mistakes that we have made in interacting with people. When you awaken and are more conscious of your lower vulnerability, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. I'm gonna go on to our next insight. Your lower vulnerability voice, that mixing of your energy and mind, is blocking you from recognizing the weaknesses and imperfections that you bring into meeting people. That your some of your weaknesses and imperfections are a part of who you are that are also at times playing out in your interactions. And it's leading you to a distorted sense of how you are coming across to people. Again, that inflated sense of well-being, thinking that other people see you the same way. Uh, it's blinding you to how people really see you, meaning you're getting a distorted view, that overly positive bias in how others are seeing you, and they're not as in love with you, and they don't necessarily like you as much as you think they do. It's often not as positive. So you're not as smart. You're not as talented. You're not as witty in their eyes as you think uh, you are. And this is what the ego energy is doing. It's getting in the way of your seeing the reality of who you are and who are being with these people. And it's also blocking you from realizing that you're often presenting a weaker, not a stronger version of yourself to people. There's a weaker version of who you are coming through rather than a positive version that you think is coming through. When you awaken and are more conscious of your lower vulnerability energy, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. We're going to look at one more insight before we take our second break. Your lower vulnerability voice, that blending of your ego energy and your mind, is blocking you from seeing how mean and insensitive that you can be towards people with your thoughts, words, and behaviors. People with lower vulnerability, they're often oblivious to how they are actually being. And that's the ego energy, the lower ego vulnerability energy that's creating this issue. It's blocking you from recognizing the emotional weight and impact that often is behind your thoughts, words, and deeds. The heaviness, the darkness, the negativeness of these things is not coming, uh, it's preventing you from really seeing it for what it is. And it's leading you to underestimate the longevity of your impact on others. You think that things may be short term if they, in fact, there is an emotional effect, but actually it can be quite long term, depending on who that other person is. And it's leading you to underestimate the depth of your impact on others. How much, how cutting, how hard, how deep of an impact you've had on other people in the way you've acted towards them. When you awaken and are more conscious of your lower vulnerability, 
you'll be able to see and realize all of this. We're coming up on our second break. When we return, we'll be looking at ego's impact on our spiritual wellness. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio, and I'll see you after the break. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you, And you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at how lower ego vulnerability can impact our spiritual wellness when it comes to getting along with people. We're looking at ego's impact on the connection, which is actually a disconnection between our humanity and our divinity the disconnection from the God within our being, which is one of the four divine gifts that we've all been given, the gift of God within, that makes it possible for all of us to exist, to live. The lessening of our spiritual wellness involves gaining distance from being the love, the life, and the energy God is within our thoughts, words, and deeds, when the ego is getting in the way of experiencing healthy interactions and developing healthy relations with people, people we don't know very well, at least at the beginning. Each of these can be undermining our spiritual wellness by distancing us from God, the God within us, our divinity. And here are some examples of ego's impact on our spiritual wellness for those with lower ego vulnerability who are failing to be their divinity when being with people. And we'll get started with ego's impact on being the love God is. People with lower vulnerability have difficulty being spiritually well when difficulty recognizing the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity weakens their ability to interact with people with unconditional, connective, unburdened, and unlimited love. Your divinity involves lovingly interacting with people that embraces the opportunity to get to know each other, including our weaknesses and imperfections, to grow relationships and recognize the presence of God in oneself as well as other people. When your lower vulnerability and emotional detachment are leading you to approach people with the absence of warmth and love. You're not able to be the unconditional love God is towards them. We must bring unconditional love when meeting people that welcomes them more deeply into our lives and we theirs. When your lower vulnerability and emotional absence are distancing you from any desire to better know people, you're not able to be the connective love God is towards them. We must bring love into meeting all people so that opportunities for connection can be created that allow relationships to grow socially, 
emotionally, and spiritually. When your lower vulnerability and emotional isolation are burdening you with a weakened or absence of love for others when meeting with them, you're not able to be the unburdened love God is towards all. We must bring love into meeting all people so we are not weighed down by the emptiness that is brought into meeting people in its absence. When your lower vulnerability and emotional distance are limiting the amount of love that is available when meeting people, you're not able to be the unlimited love God is with them. The participation in social experiences with unlimited love for all will give them an opportunity to bear fruit and enhance all who partake in them when love is at the root of one's thoughts, words, and deeds. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. Now we're going to take a look at ego's impact on being the life God is when meeting with people. People with lower vulnerability have difficulty being spiritually well when lacking awareness of the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity is leading them to dishonor and disrespect others with a lack of sensitivity to how they may be harming or impacting them. Your divinity involves recognizing, honoring, and respecting all people, including yourself, as you meet with them so that you can give them the respect all deserve when joining with them. When your lower vulnerability and emotional insensitivity are leading you to dishonor and disrespect others with disrespectful comments about their appearance, intellect, work, income, or station in life, you're not being the life God is towards them. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to respect and honor all regardless of who they are and what they have been given to work with in life. When your lower vulnerability and ignorance of the weaknesses and imperfections of your humanity are leading you to dishonor and disrespect others with efforts to elevate and celebrate yourself as being greater than and more worthy than they are, you're not being the life God is towards them. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to honor and respect all in the awareness that no one can be greater than or more worthy than others are. When your lower vulnerability and emotional detachment are leading you to dishonor and disrespect others with a lack of concern about their wellness and welfare, you're not being the life God is towards them. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to know greater honor and respect for their needs and that we are all our brothers and sisters keepers. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. Last, we'll take a look at being the energy God is and ego's impact on it when joining with people in work, play, and social settings. This involves being able to access healing and transformative energy designed into your being to naturally occur when you're connected to human and divine truth. This is a capacity that's three million years in the making, just as all the other wondrous things that we've been endowed with due to the wisdom of the ages and evolution. This is a capacity rooted in our common source, be it known by you as God, Allah, Yahweh, Vishnu, Great Spirit, Source, or another I have failed to mention. People with lower vulnerability 
have difficulty being spiritually well when failing to interact with people within the light of truth and understanding that can be found when they are not ignorant of the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity that is serving to obscure this light. Our divinity involves healing and transformation in which we are willing to join with people while seeking the truth and understanding that can be found within they and us that can lead to social, emotional, and spiritual growth when it is not being obscured by detachment from the weaknesses and imperfections of one's humanity. When lower vulnerability and difficulty Recognizing your humanity is keeping you at a distance from knowing greater truth and understanding about yourself and others that can promote social, emotional, and spiritual growth. You're not being the energy God is. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will welcome opportunities for you to get to better know yourself, better know others, and allow them to get to know you within the recognition and welcoming of your humanity. When lower vulnerability and emotional distance, detachment, and isolation are keeping you from learning truth and understanding about the humanity which exists in all people, you're not being the energy God is. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to recognize the truth of the weaknesses and imperfections of our humanity, which exists in all people, particularly yourself. When lower ego vulnerability and ignorance of the weaknesses of your humanity is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding about the divinity, which exists within you and all people, you're not being the energy God is. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of the divinity which exists within all people, and that can be of service to yourself and all people as you meet with them. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well and failing to be your divinity. As we leave our focus on ego's impact on our spiritual wellness, please know that we often make God and our connection to God and others so much harder than it has to be. And this is what happens when unhealthy ego energy is getting in between us. God and life and we become so much better and so much easier when we remove that obstacle with ego medicine. As we leave our focus on lower ego vulnerability and difficulty getting along with people in healthy ways, give some thought to the symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact that I've shared with you. I hope what I have shared with you today will serve as a dose of ego medicine and if any of it resonates with you, please help me to share it with others. I want to mention before leaving that you can purchase each of my books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, The Two Voices Within, and It's Your Ego Stupid at the online bookstores for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Balboa Press. You can also purchase Focused Ego Meditations on the shop page of my website, egoandspirit.info, which can help you to know when you are truly speaking with your voice in your life and not egos as you go about healing your ego energy where needed in its power, flexibility, or vulnerability. I end today's show with this message. The great news is that working to heal your ego energy using ego medicine by growing your awareness of its symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact will allow the divine truth in your being to flow and to shine through you 
and allow you to fully embrace each of the divine gifts. The spiritual part of healing is a given. It's part of your endowment. Divine truth and the divine gifts are part of your heritage that already exists within you. You need do nothing more to be spiritual because you already are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You only need to enhance your humanity with ego medicine so that all which is available to you is given. Fix your ego to fix your life, humanly and spiritually. I want to thank you for listening and allowing me to be your servant. Please have a great week and do come back to my next program. In peace and love, this is Dr. Nick saying goodbye for now.